things really work Here's how, here's how So much for you to learn about Lots to see and do Follow us, we'll have some fun Here's how, here's how Soap smells so good. Mmm. Soap? Never touch this stuff. Me neither. Smells like wildflowers. You should try some. This mouse does not want to smell like a wildflower. You? <laughs> a wildflower? <laughs> Way back in the days of kings and knights, people didn't smell like wildflowers. In fact, they didn't smell very good at all. They took a bath only when they had to. And since nearly everyone else had the same idea, no one noticed. We didn't really start bathing seriously until this century. Is that when they invented soap? No, soap had always been there. But some people thought it was unhealthy and would dry out their skin. We don't know who invented soap. Whoever came up with the idea was pretty smart. They sure were. In the early days, making soap was very hard work. Some people made their own. But most of it came from big soap factories. These were hot and sweaty places to work. Today, machines have taken over some parts of the job. But the kettle rooms are still pretty humid. When you've got huge kettles like these boiling away, things are bound to be steamy. It's warm. The kettle room is where the soap begins. A soap kettle is a lot bigger than it looks. The kettles in this room go down way below the floor. Take a look in this empty one. It's 14 meters deep. That must be taller than my house. Imagine that much soap in one kettle. Yo! This is one very deep kettle. What are those things down at the bottom? The circles. They're heating coils. The coils make the kettle boil. Now this kettle is full and it's boiling away. They're making porridge. Most of this porridge is tallow. Tallow? What's that? They use it to make some kinds of soap. Maybe I shouldn't tell you, but tallow is made from animal fat and scraps of meat. Yeah. They make soap from fat? I didn't know that. There are 20,000 kilograms of tallow in every one of these kettles. Other things are in here too, of course palm or coconut oil, salt water and caustic soda. The soda helps everything mix together. I feel a tummy ache coming on. A big one. It sure doesn't look like soap to me. It will after a while. The kettles boil and boil for more than a day. Preservatives are added to keep the soap clean and fresh. Every once in a while, a sample is taken. Is the mixture thick enough, or is it too thin? The soap maker has to know. Looks like glue, doesn't it? Now here's a kettle that's been boiling for a while. You can see the raw soap rising to the top as the liquid sinks to the bottom. Still looks kind of gooey. The goo is pumped from one kettle to another, gradually becoming finer and finer. The soap at this stage is called neat. How does neat soap smell? There's no smell yet. That will come later when they put the perfume in. But the neat soap can't sit around all day, or it will start to smell. What do you mean? Just a guess, but I think it's got something to do with the animal fat they put in it. That's it exactly. The animal fat, or tallow, will make the soap rot. So it's got to keep moving. 
once the soap has settled a while, it's pumped into a dryer. More water is squeezed out. Looks kind of flaky, doesn't it? Like soap flakes. The flakes, or chips, are taken up to a storage room on top of the factory. They'll be kept here in a huge bin waiting to be made into bars of soap. The air in the bin is warm and dry. Where do they put the colors and perfumes in? Yes, how do they make the soap smell so good? You'll see. This man makes the soap smell good. He adds a little palm oil, some lanolin, water, and exactly the right amount of perfume. Now over here, they're making green and white bath soap. This mixer is called a plotter. Its job is to turn all the soap flakes into noodles. It does the job very well, doesn't it? The noodles go through another set of rollers, then they drop down into a double plotter to be mixed again and again. Don't they ever stop mixing? The more the soap is worked, the better. The idea is to make it so smooth that there are no lumps or bubbles at all. Here comes the green soap. That's right. The green pellets are just about ready to be pressed into bars of soap. First, they're turned into long tubes. The tubes are cut and then shaped in a mold. Here's what the inside of a mold looks like. All the bars are turned the right way round and then boxed and wrapped. Imagine how many cakes of soap a hotel uses in one year? A lot of it comes from this factory. Each piece is stamped with the name of the soap company. And every single cake is wrapped. how animal fat can smell so good. Like wildflowers, you mean? Yes. Soap's great, but what do you think we'd do if soap hadn't been invented? Why not write a story about it?